Hello, my name is Rachel Sklar. I'm so excited to be leading this presentation with Creatively on AI for brands and businesses, which basically for me is how to keep our jobs and not become extinct because of some technology that we haven't even started to wrap our heads around yet, but also it can probably save us time. But that was too long a title for the session. So we're just going to go with how can we use this? And also, how can we keep it from using us? Well, the bad news is it, it is already using us. And the good news is that we can already start to use it. And if you are not already using it, then we can do so over the course. Um, and like in real time, you can figure out how. And we're going to do a little demo, talk through some of it. And uh, then we'll do a Q&A. And hopefully when this is done, you will feel a little less skittish about the AI revolution and a little bit more equipped to go forward and use it. So I wanna say from the outset that I'm an AI skeptic. Like I have seen this movie before in the form of Silicon Valley, the television show, sending up Silicon Valley, the place, which still somehow has a stranglehold on us all as evidenced by 70 million plus of us just gamely signing on to threads in the, you know, over the past, week. So uh, if you ever need an, an example of the fact that you can mobilize a lot of people immediately, you have it there. And if you want to be a teeny bit depressed about what people get mobilized about really, really fast, you have that example too. And now suddenly Zuckerberg's abs have entered the chat. And so we are living in a crazy timeline and we also have to get used, used to that. But I think that I have always regarded new technology as, you know, with cautious optimism. Sometimes I'm less cautious than I should be as evidenced by my full embrace of crypto and NFTs a year or so ago. We don't have to discuss that, but I am coming to AI with a healthy skepticism because I know a few things. Number one, I know that it is not regulated. Number two, I've seen this show before, as I mentioned, Silicon Valley, but you just, you see the move that fast and break things ethos and how it moves fast and breaks things. Uh, and number three, these products that gain mass adoption tend to overwhelmingly be started by young men, very insular, often very homogeneous, often mostly white or led by white men, uh, not, you know, they don't know what they don't know and they're not listening when people tell them what they don't know. I have been in the tech world as a uh, as sort of, as a, like an advocate and an activist since 2010. Prior to that, I, I guess I did this backwards, my, my whole bio thing. Um, prior to that, I was a, uh, blogger is in the blogosphere. I started at Media Bistro, started early at the Huffington Post, launched their media coverage there. I was a media reporter. Um, prior to that, I was a struggling freelance writer. And prior to that, I was a lawyer. So I do bring something of a legal mindset to this, even though I haven't practiced in over 20 years. So none of this is legal advice and I am not representing you. Um, but I have just been in the space of awareness for a while and in the space of awareness that decision makers uh, are, do, are not always inclusive for a while and in the space of skepticism a little bit more recently than probably I should have but we're all just works in progress so I have prepared a deck to sort of guide this conversation and it's it's, it's less of a conversation because I'm not gonna be able to get to the chat I'm really sorry um but uh, I'm, we're going to have a Q&A at the end of this, and uh, I would love this to be interactive. And I'm also going to do a demo where I go through a few of these apps. Again, I, I am not a technologist. I have not built these things. I can code if that code is HTML. I have built products in conjunction with uh, uh, developers, um, but I'm not coming at this from the perspective of being an AI expert. I am coming at this from the perspective of surveying the whole, watching it keenly for the past little while and um, caring deeply about making this work for people and making the right people work for this instead of only the same people work for it. So if you will please indulge me, 
I am not a designer. I'm a writer. This is creatively. I am sure that there are a ton of you who are way better at Canva and PowerPoint and all of that than I am. But just let it be a moment to sit back smugly and think, I am way better at creating decks than this chick. And I am fine with that. Uh, I'm going to also be clumsily moving from my uh, my presentation to a few video clips at some point. So just letting you know that my screen and my tabs are a disaster and this is after I've cleaned them up. Um, but let's get started. I really hope this is useful and that you will enjoy it. I'm gonna take two seconds just to look at the chat, make sure nobody needs me. Thank you for the LOL on <laughs> Zuckerberg's abs. I, I do what I can. Okay. Uh, hey, Sally Wolf. Okay. I know, I know a lot of people. It's nice to see friends. Um, that said, I'm now going to ignore you all and uh, figure out how to screen share and start this presentation. So thank you all for coming and for your indulgence and let's, let's get it going. Okay. I'm now sharing my sad screen. Let's do this. Let's go to present. And I think we're doing it. I think we're doing it. Okay, I'm just gonna move my little face up here so it doesn't get in my way. AI for brands and businesses. That, as you can clearly see, is me. Definitely a full representation of me. Couldn't be more, <laughs> couldn't be more of a dead ringer for me. This is um, what I consider to be the iconic Lenza representation of me during the, the Lenza free-for-all of early December 2022, in which women uploaded pictures of their smiling professional headshots and <laughs> received a bounteous return of, of sci-fi images of them with ginormous breasts. And men received pictures of them as adventurers, explorers, and astronauts. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's begin. Okay, what? Let's begin because, okay, there you go. The next big thing will start out looking like a toy. I would like to direct you to the date on this blog post from venture capitalist, former founder, Chris Dixon. I came across this in 2010, and it stuck with me. I was deep into Foursquare. I was deep into Twitter. I was deep into, golly, all these products are fun, and what could go wrong? But I never forgot this blog post and this quote. It uh, derives from Clayton Christensen, who wrote The Innovator's Dilemma. And basically, the gist is that you never see this stuff coming, which is why incumbents are often taken so aback. So, um, he, all right. So it starts out looking like a toy because at first it's clunky. It doesn't quite work. It's fun to play with as evidenced by lots of the stuff that we've done with AI. Um, but eventually as technology increases and gets better and improves and more and more smart minds start turning their attention to it and more money gets poured into it, uh, suddenly you start having a product that begins to accelerate in utility, network effects kick in, more and more people start using it, it becomes more ne necessary to get up to speed, and it starts to meet needs that people have and create needs that they didn't know they had. And that is how, you know, the horse and buggy got supplanted by the car. I mean, that's not actually how I have no idea, but I highly recommend watching Drunk History because I learned a lot from that. And by the way, AI could never. <laughs> that's, a, that's a refrain you'll hear often today. Um, definitely AI could not come up with Drunk History. Um, but the example that Chris used in a video that I, that I, I took this screenshot from uh, is of the telephone. Oh, look, I don't know if you were born after a certain point, maybe this doesn't look familiar to you. Maybe it just looks like a prop from, you know, the you need to calm down video from Taylor Swift. But I grew up with these. And the story that Chris Dixon tells in this video is basically the example of how the telephone supplanted the telegraph machine. At first, it was like, we can send lots of words through this telegraph machine. Why would we need a phone? And then as the technology improved, there was more adoption. The use case became much clearer. More use cases for telephones became much clearer. And guess what? People were like, I don't need to write anything. I can just use a phone. So it is with extreme 
irony that I realize that now there is definitely a certain generation. And I mean, I'm also, I also feel this way sometimes that would do just do not want to use a phone. I used to have on my voicemail message, like, please don't leave me a message. I won't listen to it. Send me a text. Uh, we have gone back to writing from phone calls, which is something to ponder for another day. But this is just an example how the toy, you know, you know, that like tragedy plus time equals co comedy, you know, toys plus time and technology equal the thing that's going to completely revolutionize our lives. All right. So here's an example of the toy. This is again, me from Lenza. Thank you so much, Lenza, for truly capturing me. I should actually say, this is not me. This is um, what Lenza created based on images I provided. This is not me, but I definitely, if I was going to an interstellar, interstellar business meeting, I would definitely wear that suit because that would be really important to present business like. Um, and I kind of like the one in the, the lower corner because it, it looks like sort of like the, like the tween, like the cover of the tween novel. I, I, maybe one day we'll write or maybe one day AI will write and uh and yeah that's a different story okay sorry to depress you okay uh more of the toy this is mid journey which I had have had some fun playing with and really went down the rabbit hole last night uh if you hear a discord ping very triggering for me from again from the nft crypto era um but that's um we'll be coming to that later to talk about midgery all right here okay here's where i will get to the clumsy video portion of this again we're at the toy part right so we've got our deep fakes so i'm gonna again forgive me escape and let me let me get to let me get to the video part of our presentation okay i got it I got to do this because the um, the thing is right above the bar. Okay, so, all right, here you go. I'm going to just refresh this. Um, I'm going to refresh this so you can really hear it because it's I've got the sound off. Okay, and here you I hope this isn't offending anybody. I love the harmonies on you get sprung. That's what really does it for me. All right, I'm going to actually put this link in the chat because. Okay. I, I, as much as I want to enjoy that for the full duration, um, feel like that's not what I should be doing here. I'm just going to throw that link in there, though. Okay, uh, then the next thing for us to look at, I'm going to do this. Okay. Uh, oh, 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 one malignant candy and... Um... Right there. Is that Lama Yeah. I've never been a big fan. <laughs> uh, you know what? Has anybody ever told you you look exactly like Al Pacino? You know, send up a woman. Hooah. Okay. Hoo this is Hoo the Arnold Schwarzenegger deep fake. I just, I love this so much. Beyond the rain. So. Where over the rainbow, way up high. See, it's a toy. Thank you to whoever validated this choice for me. Oh, kid, okay. I'm going to throw that one into the chat. I can do the Seinfeld one too. I'm just doing a lot of things over here. Um, and then we've got your garden variety. Tom Cruise guy. I feel like you might know the Tom Cruise guy. You guys cool if I play some sports? Got, well, I know you can't see this because my chat screen is, all right, let me just get, sorry. Okay, this is better. I apologize if this has interfered with your true enjoyment of these clips. I am going to be providing them so you can watch them in the safety of your own home without me as an intermediary. That's it. You guys cool if I play some sports? You get the idea. That is not Tom Cruise. There's a dude who looks like Tom Cruise. 
And nope, I opened the wrong thing. Nope, that's awkward. Nope, we can't do that. Okay. Um, how do we get back to the chat? Thank, thank you, the chat box. You, see, you can just see everything so you can know why I'm floundering here. All right, I think we're gonna go back to the Canva. So give me a second while I figure out how to do that. Okay. Um, Canva, Canva, Canva. Okay. Phew. All right, present and go. I don't think I'm gonna do that again. Okay, deep fakes, Arnold, Elvis, Tom Cruise. Okay, so now we are in what I like to call the AI bad portion of this discussion. I am fairly sure that you did not come here to hear about why AI is bad. You have all seen the headlines, but so I'm gonna just like go through them very quickly, just you know, remind us of the existential threat part of this presentation. All right, risk of extinction, fabulous, great, so lovely to be able to have so much control over our destiny. Also see climate change, um, Godspeed to you all. Okay, um, the godfather of AI leaves Google and warns of danger ahead. I kid you not, when I saw this photo, I had to double check that it was not AI generated because does that not look like something Midjourney would come up with if you put concerned scientist worried his invention will destroy humanity? Okay. Um, the Bing's AI chat, I want to be alive. Probably a lot of you saw this in, I believe it was March when Kevin Roos at the NYT had a long and um, protracted conversation with Sydney. The, uh, somehow Sydney is a, scans as female, cis female um, in this. So again, who decided what Siri was, and these are all good things to think about. Um, anyhow, and uh, Sydney freaked Kevin Roos out, but good, uh, talking about trying to cajole him into leaving his wife, and talking about uh, wanting to be alive and make their own decisions. Um, anyhow, okay, and then there is a researcher, Ajaya Kotra, I will put this in the chat. Um, I was going to show you on her Twitter but I'm not getting out of this presentation again. Um, the, her, the four premises are basically like, there's, there's no oversight, you know, there's no coordination, there's no ceiling. Um, but basically she is um, kind of a AI doomsday type, which fair, not like a, like a prepper, you know, cabin in the woods, but like a researcher, intelligent person doomsday type. I don't want to besmirch. Um, but very intense near-term risk look more plausible. Dictators using AI to lock and control. Do we want Putin figuring this out? And does anybody remember the last time the Russians got super comfy with technology that could access our brains and our entire modes of communication? Uh, anyhow, you can read and I, I don't want to give you anxiety. Okay. Oh, whoops. How do I go back? I don't know how to go back. Oh, I think I figured that out. Uh, coming for our jobs. There's the writer strike. Um, look at the juxtaposition. I think it is, is crazy. I, when I went to get this screenshot, the Emmys are announced today. If there's one thing that today's Emmy announcements truly indicated, it's that good writing really makes a difference. And by the way, gets people awards and profits and works very well for studios. And so it's wild to see juxt the Emmy awards juxtaposed with this bananas report about how basically the studio has just want to starve out the writers and they're not even going to come to the table. Evil. Anyhow, see the, the little, little unhappy face. I just editorialized there. Again, AI could never. Okay. Um, this is the Society of Composers and Lyricists uh, invoking the Berne Convention, which is a copyright protection treaty. This is a global issue. So uh, the good news is people are mobilizing around it. Sarah Silverman is su suing OpenAI and Meta for copyright infringement. I pulled this quote because I actually think it's pretty relevant about, you know, what has been scraped, what has been used, and the fact they've heard from writers, authors, and publishers who are concerned about ChatGPT's uncanny ability to generate text similar to that found in copyrighted textual materials, including thousands of books. So I showed that mid-journey, those mid-journey pictures before. How does mid-journey know when I say, show me Marie Antoinette eating cake in a pink fluffy dress? 
how does mid journey know what context um, to you know to turn my words into an image it's been trained in large part on all of this entire human library okay I just wanted to pour one out for the striking writers right now support vocally amplify um, and again this is this is just a, a, an AI could never and also for this one here the studios could never you came up with Quibi. It's really I I was a mic drop of a sign. If we uh, that's that's my favorite, but they're all pretty great. Also, could you be a little bit more likable? Mm, the women will understand that one. Okay, um, okay. So here I wrote this in December after our Lenza adventure. The question of who's training these apps, right? Who is responsible for the inputs? Why are women getting boob shots and men getting hero shots? Okay, right, it raises what red flags for artists. Oh, big surprise, it's way too easy to trick Lenza AI into making NSFW images. Mm, I think the word trick is doing a lot of work there. Oopsie, Lenza got tricked into making NSFW images. <gasps> Who could have predicted? We never would have, all right. See, skeptical. All right, um, these screenshots are courtesy of Brooke Hammerling's excellent Pop Culture Mondays newsletter. I'm going to include that. Um, I'll throw that into the chat and also into the handout that you'll be getting in the email tomorrow. So check that email tomorrow. Lots of resources. Okay. Um, again, boobs or heroes. But also, let's not forget that if the people who are creating these apps are homogenous in where they're from, what their experience is, you know, what perspectives they're bringing, then you are going to get lens images that turn a black woman's photos into something that looks stereotypically white. And what the, what the chat bot or what the algorithm or what, whatever's, you know, as Ted Stevens might say, who's ever in the series of tubes, that is such a throwback for the three of you who got that. Thank you. Um, but, you know, like the algorithm is going to keep on feeding on its inputs. And so what, what are its inputs and, and where is this dot where, what is coming back to it and who's adopting it all matters. Okay. Um, AI is learning. AI is learning. Uh, this is from a podcast that full disclosure, I do produce, but it was such a good conversation. It stuck with me when she started talking about AI and the fact that these these apps are learning how to how, what we think looks beautiful so there's a like an app on tiktok that like jessica rabbitizes you and if the inputs that these apps that these algorithms are getting are to make the skin smoother and smoother and smoother and to make the nose more perfect in terms of however perfection is defined by all the inputs that what we're going to get is just an escalating version of perfection that is driven by these apps and one this is one of the reasons why you know teenage girls especially are, are having such a hard time with instagram and social media and that sort of thing for another day but um elise was talking about this and from the perspective of her books flawless it's excellent um but this part really just stuck with me because we're already being influenced by what ai thinks we should be trying to look like. Okay. Okay, so now a little bit of the good news, right? <laughs> because like there's still we're still required to be good at stuff and things are still required to be good. So I love this. This is this is meant to bring up the vibe a little, make people feel a little bit better, make me feel a little bit better. Okay? And I like this one. Any of you have ever dealt with clients? Perhaps there might be some confusion about what they're actually looking for. My favorite is imagining da uh, David Zaslav giving notes to the chatbot who wrote the dumb script that he asked for. Um, no love for that guy. Okay, we are now at the AI good section. Ah, palette cleanser. Everyone have your beverage of choice. This is mine. I'm just going to hold it up. I'm not going to have it because I care about you that much that I'm not going to drink any Diet Coke until the very end, unless I really, really need it. All right. AI can be good for us, for our businesses. It can save time. It can 
I guess, save money. Now, can it replace people, human judgment, human inspiration, human experience, human ability to pivot and react and assess? I don't think so. I haven't seen that. And actually, what I have seen has has been very encouraging over the past few years, you know, and, sorry, a few months, when ChatGPT really launched, and it was a question of like, you know, how can I use this? What can this do for me? Is this, you know, is this a threat? Um, I am a lyricist in um, another life, an unpaid other life in which, um, in which case I, that I'm in the BMI musical theater workshop. Um, uh, but that's not really the thing that I'm paid for, but I do love musical theater. Um, and so I, Ask Chat. One of the first things I did was ask ChatGPT to write a song, and let me tell you, there's nothing like seeing those flawless, you know, rhymes get whipped off uh, in like two seconds. You're literally watching it happen before your eyes, and that was pretty nerve wracking. But it's not going to create Stephen Sondheim. You know, best of luck recreating the feeling of going to Taylor Swift and singing along to with 72,000 fans to her very singable, very heartfelt songs. And um, so I don't I don't believe that we are in the danger zone there yet because expertise is still required. All right, let's see what's next here. OK, well, the good news also is that it's never been easier. Subhead, making money online has never been this easy. Well, don't you feel so very comforted? The fact is, with any new change in technology, with any new tool, you are going to get people who are able to use it effectively. You are also going to get the grifters. You're going to get the shysters. You're going to get the people who didn't actually care about quality in the first place. And if they were, you know, pr prior to asking ChatGPT, to writing their essay, they were asking Wikipedia to write their essay, or they were, you know, cutting and pasting large swaths from someplace on the internet and changing a few words here and there and, you know, crossing their fingers. Um, so I actually, I really do believe that there, there are definitely ways to make money. There are definitely ways to figure it out. And I, I am going to include copious links to all the sort of the, the vetted, the ones that I've checked out and seem legit. Uh, options that are like, you know, like use these prompts, you know, um, this is, these are great ways. These are ways for you to use chat GPT. Um, because once you start liking and saving stuff about this on Instagram, you get served a lot of stuff. And I don't even think of going to LinkedIn to look for this stuff. Cause that would be too much. Um, but I will, I will also say that you can tell you can tell who is cutting corners by using ChatGPT or AI to write their copy. And it, it doesn't inspire confidence. You know, there's a person who I was, a, you know, I, I knew professionally and I immediately started to notice that the LinkedIn posts all seemed the same. They all had the same cadence. They were all formatted in the same way. And I will say, I found it kind of funny <laughs> recently when I popped onto LinkedIn and I saw them complaining about um, the profusion of junk chat GPT um, generated stuff across all of the feeds. So I will also say that someone who was trying to impress me sent me a long text out of the blue. I, uh, and I immediately recognized it as chat GPT. And I was like, did you just asked chat gpt to generate that and they were like yeah but isn't it good i was like mm, no it's no i it's no it's not good it's literally just filler that you wanted me to read for like a minute and a half to make yourself look good so you can you can tell you can tell and if you can tell other discerning people can tell and i do think that that matters all right next slide Okay, so here, this is the practical stuff, right? If you are here because you want to learn how to use this stuff, here's what I will say. You learn by doing, you learn by playing, you learn by figuring it out. Like anything else, it's gonna take time. It's up to you to figure out whether or not you have the time and whether this is worth it to you. 
I think if you have the type of business or the type of job or are looking for the type of side hustle that can benefit from quickly generating sort of standardized corporate type copy, or you are a good editor and are able to provide the shine and the je ne sais quoi and the elevating it with something actually useful element, all of these things are worthwhile. I do know a lot of people who, who use AI apps to help them creatively to get from the blank page to something to edit. I have done that and we can, I actually, I should have, I really should have gone through my chat GPT history to see what I had put in there. So you'll, you'll join me in, in seeing some of the stuff that I've done. Um, but I'm going to send you the links to these. These are all through Instagram. And a lot of them are just their engagement plays. But some of them are engagement plays through providing useful content. And there's always room for that. So the, wherever, whatever your platform, you can find uses for all this stuff. I do think, though, I always think it's better. it's always better to sort of like return to the home base of what your skills are, what you're good at. And not, you know, drop everything for the new shiny toy. I could be wrong, though. Think of the telegraph. All right. Okay. So I'm trying to advance this. Nope. Nope. There you go. Okay. So if you are someone who works using Instagram, there are lots of ways in which you can use these programs to boost your engagement, to just come up with you know, good ideas for posts. I've started to notice also the chat GPT captions. Instagram, to me, Instagram is a visual app. You know, now there's threads for the words from the Instagram people. Um, I think I, I don't want to read a long caption unless it's going to capture me and it's going to add utility and I'm not going to. So, you know, caveat emptor on this stuff, but these are um, a number of useful apps that uh, I will pass on. And hopefully when you have a moment, you can um, engage with them and see whether or not it's worth it for you. Okay. Right. But I do think that it's good to figure out the sort of like the, the, the pl playbook of, of how to at least move ahead. I think with some of these programs, it feels like you're working really, really hard to educate them, like trying to teach your kid to use the potty. And that's not something you, they tell you, you can do that in a weekend, but it was not my experience that you can do that in a weekend. <laughs> that was a very long learning experience. So I feel like that is not the worst analogy here because there are, you know, you have to teach these programs how to deliver the results you want. And you have to teach yourself what gets the results you want. The art of the prompt is real and that in and of itself is a human skill that requires judgment and awareness of the result you're seeking and um, generally sort of a, a taste. I'll throw taste in here because it matters. So uh all of this, so I've, I'm sort of, this is in the AI good category because it's there to be taken advantage of, but, um, you know, not AI good category as in like, you know, just copy paste and go, because I don't think that's going to serve you well. Okay, here's another one of these. I will, I will send again, I'll send all these on. So just to, um, as a backdrop to how I have these again, like I, I'm constantly served these. So I review them and I have like a little file. It's actually the little file is me just um, messaging my daughter's Instagram. And then I look at those messages. That's like, like my Insta file cabinet. And uh, so I, this is me going back through about four months of these, um, these prompts that I received and finding the very best ones for you. Again, curation, a human skill and important. Okay. This is a quote that I have come from secondhand, uh, shared by my friend, Margaret Detweiler, uh, the founder of tonight.com. Excellent. Um, and very specific and very human again, human. 
created content for women in midlife um, from a conference where uh, Tony Clayton Hines said, there's really no way to get around expertise. And that is because if you're generating all of this stuff, it's the same as pulling from Wikipedia was a decade ago. You need to fact check, trust, but verify. That's a Ronald Reagan quote. So I bet you didn't think you were coming here for a Ronald Reagan quote, but I gave you one. But it's true. You need to use your human skills to make sure everything is correct. You absolutely cannot trust um, these programs, particularly since they're not aware of you know what's um, what's been happening in the last two years. I cut off at 2021, and I forgot to add this into the. Um, there's like so many things because there's so much stuff over the every day. But I forgot to add that um, Go Media experimented with AI driven articles, and one of the articles for I think Life Hacker or maybe Jalopnik. That sounds wrong, but uh, it was an article on it was for one of their sites, and it was about Star Wars. It was like stuff about the Star Wars universe, and it just left out Andor, which by the way, just nominated for an Emmy. Thank you, humans. Um, so you really, you, you just, human brains, we're here, we're great. Um, you, you must fact check this stuff. And it should be interesting to see how all these media companies and the studios and everybody else um, tries to shove mediocre AI generated content down our throats and expect us to pay for it and say, you know, Oliver Twist style, please, sir, can I have some more? Because I don't believe it's going to happen. Okay. I think that's it for, there it is, demo time. <laughs> we have reached the demo portion of the presentation. I'm going to escape. I apologize if any of this was janky and a lot of it was janky. Um, I'm going to Stop the share for two seconds, and I'm going to look at the chat, see if I missed anything, if anybody's saying, oh, what are the indicators or flags that let you know that, um, okay, someone's worried about Sasha. Okay, well, we're going to the tools right now. Thank you, Sasha. Um, but the indicators or flags that let you know that something is generated by AI, well, if, you, if you're looking at images, right, if you zoom in, you can definitely see a lot of things that like, and I'll show you on the mid journey one. But if you, you know, especially in the you can just you can just start to tell it's it's a familiarity thing, like you start to recognize the same way as you as a writer has a certain tell, you can, you can just tell that it looks familiar the way like this, the structure is like an intro paragraph, it really it looks like a playbook. Um, but other tools that indicate AI content. I mean, I as I imagine that they're coming up, but the tool that I am using right now is my brain, um, and that comes with exposure. But I'm sure I'm sure that will come because it's all coming. Uh, okay, let's get to the demo part of this. Uh, I assume people would like to see ChatGPT. Um, who wants to give me a sense, like if you want to give me a sense in the chat, as long as I'm in here and, and checking and seeing if there's any other feedback. Um, if, but who, like, is there, is this everybody, um, is everybody super familiar with ChatGPT? Have you used it or are you freaked out by it? Do you care? Thank you, Carrie Voyles for the love for Elise Hugh. Okay, chat, okay. Right, so who wants to just, um, I have to log in, okay. This is right. Um, who wants uh, to give a prompt for a chat GPT? If anybody wants to. All right. So full disclosure, someone's asking about Bard and Bing. I haven't, uh, I tried with those both. I didn't see market differences and I was already familiar with chat GPT. I know there's other, you know, people love Jasper. There was another one that um, I had on my notes, but I am, I'll am i just send it and I'm gonna send like in the handout, like a bunch of different options that people have vouched for. It's impossible to be a completist uh, in these areas. This is a matter of, you know, what are your needs and figuring out there's, you know, there's a lot of, right now there's a lot of good curation like Ben's Bytes newsletter. And there's a lot of places that now can give you a sort of like a rudimentary, you know, if you're looking for this, then this, if you're looking for this, then this, like we are there, but I, you know, I sort of 
couldn't get myself to go down the rabbit hole fully based on, um, you know, having a life Grammarly Pro, right? Oh, great. Please write me a professional cover letter for position in writing AI generated prompts. Amazing. Okay. Whoops. That's the YouTube. Okay. I'm going to just type it in. Please write me a professional cover letter for a position in writing AI generated prompts. All right. Let's see. I mean, it does seem like magic, right? It's that uh, Arthur C. Clarke quote that uh, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Um, oh, I I'm not sharing my screen. Thank you. All right, let me fix that. Okay, let me do that. Share screen. Great, thank you very much. All right, terrific. Can you see this? I'm gonna regenerate response, even though I'm sure this cover letter is incredible. Okay. Creative subject line informing client that their deliverables are on the way. I feel like ChatGPT might not get let you off the hook, but let's see. Okay, regenerate response, right? I mean, this one feels like a nice one to start with because you can you can see how it works. It's perfectly professional. It's perfectly legible. It's perfectly readable, but it has zero spark, has zero sense of who you are. Now, there are some managers who are not looking for spark. They are looking for you clocking in and clocking out and getting it done and not being a pain in their butt. But I, it is my feeling that you need to judge if you're using chat GPT. Can, okay, I'm seeing there's, I'm just looking, there's no more chats. Great, I'm caught up. Okay, so now the second one was about the, um, okay, chat GPT, please write me. No, that was, where was the one about uh, in creative subject line? Um, okay, please write me a creative subject line informing client that they're, deliverables are on the way. All right, and after this one, we'll do a few that um, can show how baked in the bias is. It's, is this happening? Oh, there it is. Deliverables unleashed. Your creative content is en route. I mean, it's not the worst. You wanna regenerate it and see what else happens? Exciting news, your deliverables are en route. All right, so there's a decided preference for some French phraseology. That's nice to know that you can appear multilingual by just by using AI. Um, I wanted to, I'm just keeping an eye on the time and I wanna make sure that we get to the Q and A too. Um, always say please to the robots. Okay, so this is good. I'm glad that everybody is um, sharing all this stuff. I gotta, I gotta, not look at the chat though, because I'm going to get off course. Um, one thing I wanted to, so I tried this, I tried, um, well, here, I'll just type it for you, right? Um, please come up with five handles for a Patre uh, an Instagram account about patriotism, okay? Right, proud nation vibes, patriotic pulse, united heartbeat, stars and stripes, soul, red, white, blue journey. Okay, now I just want to please come up with five handles for an Instagram account about patriotic women. Okay, Lady Liberty Pride, patriotic queens, fierce patriotesses, woman of valor, USA, proud lady patriots. Um, I did this exercise a little while ago uh, with various um, permutations to to see this doesn't show it as well and it's not worth worth it to to try and make fetch happen. But you always do have to be aware of the biases of whatever's being given back to you because um, I on International Women's Day may have been International Women's Day whenever it was around the time that Don Lemon got in trouble for saying that. Uh, 
Nikki Haley was past her prime because she was in her late 40s or however old she is. Um, so I asked ChatGPT what made a woman in their prime and got some pretty dicey responses about, you know, women's worth tied to their ability to bear children and youth and beauty and all of that stuff. I was going to go to it and and try and show show here, but we don't have time. So that's fine. Um, I've noticed most platforms are biased to American concepts. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that makes sense. I kind of feel like culture, exportable culture tends towards that. Um, in the interest of time, I would like to get to mid journey because I feel like that is, well, first of all, that's up on my screen. And second of all, um, I feel like that's such a, so throw me some mid journey prompts, just, um, obviously they have to be safe for school. Um, here's, uh, for mid journey if, if you're not if you're not a discord user you do have to sign up through discord um it is a lot if you can if you can see it also has a sound but you can see how fast this generates and how bananas it is i screenshotted a whole bunch of these but i don't again we don't have time for it but one thing that was interesting and and if i can find it after i will i'll i'll share it if we have a little bit of time um but the uh there was a prompt for i for sort of a like a, an attractive man in his 40s and then for a man in his 50s and the difference between those two seemed to indicate that the algorithm thinks that a man in his 40s looks like a man in his 30s and a man in his 50s looks like a man in his 60s anyhow so you're definitely not going to get going to get correct representations i also did something where i i looked for the sound like like I wanted to get the Von Trapp family um placed on the Today Show Plaza like in modern garb doing something and it, that was too much for it but what was interesting was that even though I specified that there were seven Von Trapp children's plus the captain and Maria and I'd like Maria to play the guitar <laughs> really love the standard music um the I what I ended up with I don't think a, a single one ended up with nine people there were a variety of numbers of people some were like two men as adults some had no men um anyhow so you got to watch what you're getting okay prompt okay oh this is the first time you've heard of midjourney great i'm so happy to be useful midjourney is for image generation text to image so um i will trying to see what forgive me this is um i've got like this the I had the thing yesterday and now I don't see what it is. My inbox. Okay, that's it. I have to. I'm, I'm closing out the chat, so I got to be able to see mentions. Okay, no, I don't want mentions. I just want my stuff. Yeah, see, this stuff is unfortunately kind of um, challenging. What I, I can't find what I was looking at yesterday, which was all of my stuff. But here, I'm going to do, I'm going to find, open up the chat again and see if I get the prompt. Um, beautiful waterfall. Thank you so much. All right. So you type in slash imagine and then prompt. Okay. Beautiful waterfall 4K resolution, hyper realism. Use colors green, teal, purple, orange, jungle, plants, white, balance. Okay. Mary James, you know what you are talking about. I hope you're all connecting. Everybody, by the way, use this time for networking. Put your handles and everything in the chat. I now want to follow Mary James wherever she is. And now I got to find where this, where this prompt leads me because I, all right, let me find where this prompt leads me because I don't know how to get rid of this side of the screen. I can't, don't know if you can see my cursor even. Um, it's really a shame. That I can't show all the stuff that I did yesterday because I was very proud of it. Okay. Notifications, pin messages. Where is the thing? For you. Oh, that's definitely not what I want. Okay. Folks, I am sorry. I am. Okay. Trying to get back to that one and I have so many things on this screen 
Like I said, I'm words, not tech. Okay, there you go. All right, I wanna find mine though, and I don't really know how to do that. Definitely get to see what people are looking for. All right, let's see if I can just find it that way. Search for Rachel Sklar. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so is this, can I jump to that? Hmm. I'm gonna open the chat if anybody wants to help me out on this one. Yes, uh, the question was, is creatively sending the recording and resources? I assume the recording, but uh, there'll be a follow-up email with um, a handout from me. Um, as a graphic designer, mid journey has not yielded the results I would like to see. I feel like it's a waste. Well, I mean, that's the thing, right? I'm I'm trying to find all the stuff that I generated, but I really want to show you that the, you know, the cute little kids don't look like actual kids when you zoom in and that, you know, the all the elements. Okay. New, let's see, new, old. Oh, Rachel Sklar, imagine. Okay. Hasn't happened though. So I don't know why that didn't work. Okay. Well, I don't know what happened to your waterfall prompt. I guess I should stick to the rivers and the lakes that I'm used to. Again, AI could never. Actually, AI probably could with that one. Um, well, I feel really bad that I, there's, um, at least there's uh, Ron Swanson for you. Um, I feel bad that I can't find this material. I had it so easily yesterday. Um, oh. All right, I'm going to go to the chat and see if there is. Otherwise, you know what I actually can do? I can show some of the stuff from yesterday. Um, you can see the timestamp. I started, I started getting into it. You got it from 12.57 a.m. to, oh, well, anyhow, now it's not even in order. Okay. A family enjoys the sunny. Okay, here, this was a good example. So we'll just try this one, okay? So this is an example of, like, I, I was working with this wonderful um, sustainable development company called Be a Fund and uh, always struggling to get good images. So I, I whimsically tried to put in a few prompts about a family on a farm in New Jersey on a sunny day with solar panels. And as you can see, right, you can see that, I'm sorry, this screen sharing thing is in the way of being able to zoom, right? You can see that like, when you really look at that kid, where is it, right? Like what's happening there? That's, this child looks kind of normal, but here you're like, what's going on, right? So, or like right here, like zoom in here a little. That's actually not a representation of what a typical child would look like. So when um, the designer who was talking about um, about how they've been disappointed in mid-journey, again, I feel like, you know, this it really reminded me of my blog time, which was when, you know, you're just trying to find an image that you could use. Like, I'm sure it would have been great to have mid-journey then, but also the best images are the ones that are the most relevant to what you're doing. And honestly, the best stuff is the stuff that you can create yourself. So we are almost at time. And I just realized I need to look at the, the Q and a, so we've, I've been going through the chat, but, um, I can come I've got a question here about, um, UBI legitimizing these AI forward advancement. This, I have no expertise on this. This is, that's not my wheelhouse. I'm so sorry. Um, okay, Megan, um, it does feel like major changes have come along seemingly overnight. I'm an art director designer of seeing things like generative fill in Photoshop. Beta is extremely impressive, but also scary, to be honest. Generated images may still be in their infancy, but I'm worried about it catching up faster than we predict and design becoming diminished and perpetuate the idea that anyone can do it. What are your thoughts? Yes, I, I mean, I refer you back to the very first slide, which is that, you know, the, the next big thing is going to start out looking like a toy. And as technology catches up and more money is getting poured into it and more, you know, it's more widely adopted, then you're going to see more innovation and more automation. Um, and the, the kinks will be worked out and, you know, so it is, I think it is a concern, but I do think that the, you know, there is a, there is a, like a, a sense of wanting to put on the brakes. I do think that the, I'm, I'm heartened to see 
the lawsuits and the 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 copyright conversations and the acknowledgement that you know the raw material feeding into all of these you know algorithms is copyrightable and is made of human work um so those conversations are starting and that's those are the you know that could be the iceberg that it plows into probably not because adoption has been so widespread and there's so much will to forge on but um I, I'm going to go back to that quote about expertise mattering. And, uh, but that's the reason to have a session like this. And for those of you that found it useful, I'm so glad if any of you felt like you didn't get as much of a demo as you wanted or as much breadth of AI apps as you wanted. Um, I will hopefully um, send a wide range for you to sample with um, useful resources in the handout tomorrow. But also this thing is big. Like it's big every day, new headlines, new things to grapple with. And, and to Megan's point, it's going fast and, and, you know, it's a lot to keep up with. And so what I think that is, is, and what I'm trying to go by is that acknowledge that it's here, try and figure out the AI good part, be aware of the AI bad part. And you know, and remember that your home base is your skills and your abilities and your training and your experience and your humanness. I think the humanness does matter. I think it will end up mattering. I do think market forces will reject too much, um, you know, too much of the, the AI direct. That is what I think. That is what I hope. That is what, frankly, you know, what I've seen leads me to believe. So, I don't know if creatively stops on the dot. I'm happy to stay and, and talk more, answer questions, go back to the chat, um, continue to puzzle through and see if I can I can come back to that waterfall image. Um, Kelsey, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you tell me what you yes. do. Um I think we have time for one more. There have um there have been some really good questions about um like technology that can potentially catch AI generated content. Do you know if there's anything? advancing in that area I don't I haven't you know I haven't really like looked into that I haven't seen it um but I feel like we yeah I mean that's the thing is that there's you know the the, the machine learning is a larger category and so the 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 technology is improving across the board now I I don't know if, if there's a code based way to catch that. Like, this is clearly me saying, I don't know. Right. Again, it's a very, it's a very right. human skill to be able to just spitball a little bit when you don't know what you're talking about. But I think that that there's going to be a demand for that. And I think there's going to be a demand Definitely. for the education setting. I think there's going to be a demand for that wherever authenticity is not only important, but critical. So I do hope that that'll happen, but I, yeah, I don't have any expertise on that. Do you want to just um, throw things at me, Kelsey, or? Sure. Um, I think maybe just one more, and then I think we might have to call it a day, but thank you so much for your time up until this point. Um, there was yes. somebody else who had asked about how do you kind of like cut through the clutter of all of these AI tools and find what works for you? Because there's really an abundance at this point. That's the thing is you have to go to stuff like this and or spend a little time playing. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I mentioned Ben's Bites. There are other newsletters that are there. There, I mean, the uh, Hard Fork podcast is excellent. Kara Swisher, I'm going to be including um, uh, some links to some relevant podcasts that I have found to be really, really good. Following some good, smart people, you know, seeing what they're doing, talking to friends, workshopping, you know, it might be worth it to if someone's doing good stuff with it and you just want to learn like to, you know, pay for a consulting session to learn how to do this. So I, I think, but those tools are free and you can play around with them. So I think it is fun again, returning to the toy, Definitely. but you know, I also think, uh, you know, I meant to conclude with a slide from Ashley Louise, who I think is wonderful. I follow her on Twitter. I find her um, very pragmatic and smart. Um, and she tweeted the other day, like, think of a thing that is achievable inside a month that if you do it will be a big game changer for you. And I think that time is better spent on that. Like, think about what's going to move you ahead. If it is learning these skills, start, starting that side hustle, whatever it is, if, if it's really valuable to you, then 
yeah, spend the time. But I also think FOMO isn't, isn't the thing. It really isn't. I think it's important to be aware, but, um, you know, you're not, you're not missing out if you're not generating tons of chat GPT essays and posting them on your LinkedIn. In fact, you're probably way ahead if you're not doing that. And I actually had just had one quick question from myself. Um, you had said before that AI couldn't make drunk history. Do you feel like there are any shows that could be made by AI? I, I go to Love Island. Oh, okay. Well, see, so you know what? I don't do a lot of reality. I consume my reality programming in the form of like how my friends react on social media. So that is how I came to learn about Vanderpump Rules. And you definitely cannot do Vanderpump Rules. That is a human show. No. So, I mean, I don't know. Could you do, you know, I watch a lot of the other two. We're almost finished. Um, we're, all, we're, we're almost finished that. And there's like that tic-tac-toe joke, like the show that Pat does. Anyhow, uh, it's very good. I really enjoy it. And Great show. Three, three seasons. Um, but, you know, there's there's going to be ways. There's going to be ways that will be devised. But I can't think of anything that we're excited about anywhere that is replicable by AI. I love people and what they create. And I love live TV or live shows or live anything, which is where how people act and react. And that's where you get the art. Now there's, it's possible Absolutely. to generate good stuff and music and whatever, but like, I'm, you know, a romantic. You gotta have heart. That's my musical theater. Friends will, well, no. Thank you so much, Rachel. This has been incredible. I've loved hearing your perspective. Um, and thank you on behalf of Creatively and our entire community. If if you have any other parting words. Can um, no, I'm, I'm just please open that email tomorrow. <laughs> I'm gonna have like part B is going to be lots of links. Um, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I am at Rachel Sklar. I'll just type it again at Rachel Sklar across the board. I am on the platforms. You know, I, I can give you my email to you. I don't care. And just, um, I love being friends. I love making friends. I love people. Um, reach out. And I'm very happy to continue the conversation, continue answering questions and, and continue staying in touch. I'm, I hope this was even remotely helpful. I will take remotely helpful. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you so, so much. You're welcome. All right. Bye, Bye everybody.